Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our show. I am minion number three, Abraham, and tonight we're joined by minion number two, Erdina. Hi, everyone. I'm from Eco Minion. Yes, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. This is Team Eco Minions. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. And tonight we're going to talk about land pollution and how biotechnology can help us overcome it. Land pollution has been one of a serious topic among us, actually. Um, I'm not sure if you guys noticed, but lately our the news has been flooded with uh, mislationist. Um, earthquakes and other countries, not just in Malaysia, but right now we are focusing in Malaysia. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, land pollution is a serious problem that impacts humans, animals, and the earth. Without taking measures now to reduce pollution levels, permanent changes to the land can occur. That's right, but do you guys know what exactly is land pollution, to be exact? That's right, you the listener. What is land pollution? I'm giving you two seconds. One, two. Alright, time's up. So what is land pollution? Okay, land pollution is actually the destruction and contamination of the land through the direct and indirect action of humans. The pollution results in changes to the land, such as soil erosion. Some of the changes, some changes are reversible, while others are not. Hmm, that sounds pretty serious. So, how do you think biotechnology can overcome this problem, dear viewer? <clears throat> I mean, if you don't know, it's okay. That's why you are listening to this podcast, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, biotechnology is being used to combat land pollution through the use of bioplastics. Plastic pollution is one of the major environmental issues we're currently facing. New technologies that incorporate biology in the production of plastics could offer a more sustainable alternative. For instance, companies like Avantium are developing methods to produce 100% recyclable bioplastics from agricultural and forestry waste. Honestly, these methods we can apply in Malaysia. Since Malaysia is one of the countries that has been uh, known to have waste accumulation, not just in the sea, but also in the land itself. But Abraham, are you forgetting another way of biotechnology that can help us control land pollution? Yes, I am definitely forgetting something because it's something about uh, something about something about getting things dirty and cleaning up, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. But uh, can you can you tell the view, uh, the listener right now? Uh, let me try to remember. <coughs> All right, <coughs> let me let me just pull out my Google for a moment. <coughs> All right, <coughs> Bing AI. <coughs> okay, so <coughs> another, another way biotechnology can help combat land pollution is through the use of enzymatic detergents. These detergents consist of specialized enzymes obtained from microorganisms. They are able to break down molecules behind difficult strains such as blood and fat. And unlike chemical alternatives, enzymatic detergents are biodegradable. Did I get that right, Edina? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, nowadays, uh, in biotechnologies, in biotechnology itself, it is a wide field that you can embark to. And it is actually rapidly evolve, evolving, evolution, just like cancer. Yes, that is very true. The world itself is constantly changing and metastizing, just like that insidious disease. And then the thing about the second method that Abraham said just now, it is very safe to be used because basically enzymes are biological agents. It, uh, we are also using enzymes in our body and our daily life, such as the detergent that we are using in our laundry, 
cooking, such as softening the meat. So why don't we apply it to land pollution itself, right, Abraham? Yes, Erdina, that is very true. Land pollution is a very, very widespread problem. Have you even gone out and smelt not the roses? Have you gone out and smelt the ditch recently, ladies and gentlemen? My dear viewers, I'm pretty sure there's at least one ditch somewhere outside wherever you live. So... And then the thing about uh, land pollution is uh, we can't tell what waste actually comes to the to the uh, garbage disposal unit, right? Because it's, a, it's basically a mixture of materials, biological and non-biological. So it's very hard for us to tell apart, right, Abraham? Yes, it is. Everything that you throw in the dustbin is actually mixed because unlike in foreign countries like say Japan we do not practice uh, what eh? katsu eh? I think it's katsu right only katsu I know is chicken katsu don no that one is sushi king <laughs> yes it is but what is katsu katsu is basically uh, it's a region, if I'm not mistaken, it's a region in Japan that practice uh, more than four types of recyclable uh, category. Oh, is it the one that recycles what? 80% of the household wastes in this one little center in the middle of town. Yeah, and then can you imagine that if we apply that to Malaysians? Can you? Yeah, that would, be, that would be pretty epic, actually, because not only would we be able to get our waste materials to be somehow useful rather than just clogging up our toilets, we will also get some amount of return, some amount of income on the stuff that we throw away. Yeah, I agree on that, because sometimes our people, we tend to do something if we get something out of it, right? Exactly, because what you give is what you get. Yes, we give and take. We are good people. We are good minions, ladies and gentlemen. We're all good minions here. So, ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the conclusion of our podcast. It's great to see how biotechnology can help us overcome such a serious problem. Yes, it is definitely uh, it gives us a sense of hope and a more sustainable future for the next generation. So, last but not least, do yourself a favor and be a be an eco minion. Ba -ba 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 -ba. <laughs>